Uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, very good morning. I'm Takeshi Komoto. Komoto, uh, Executive Director of Jetro New York Office, uh, of second from Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry. Just a short introduction of uh, our organization, Jetro. Uh, Jetro is a government affiliated organization supervised by Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, METI. Uh, with whose mission is to promote trade and investment between Japan and the rest of the world, and in my case, based in New York, Japan, and the United States. <coughs> First of all, I would like to thank the organizer, IFO, for giving me this uh, great opportunity to speak to the most intellectual audience in Providence right now. Um, uh, so, the p <coughs> so I'm very uh, honored to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, the previous speaker, Michael, presented a very uh, fascinating uh, presentation from an academic point of view. Um, I, as a government official, policymaker, practitioner, I would like to talk about uh, what practitioner in Japan, policymakers in Japan, are thinking of the state of the Japanese economy and the way forward. <coughs> uh, from uh, people from academic background, this may not be so familiar. But as uh, this uh, org uh, forum is about interdisciplinary um, purpose, I hope I could be conducive to that end. And I guess my presentation will be available uh, on this uh, website. And I have some few, few, uh, few, few copies of the presentation materials. So if you are interested, I can give you after the, my presentation. So um, before speaking about the uh, Abenomics, <coughs> just to uh, briefly go back and look back uh, about the performance of the Japanese economy. And as many of you know, for the past nearly 10, 20 years, the economic performance was not impressive as it was <coughs> uh, as it used to be before the bubble bursted in the early 1990s. And since then, Jap Japan experienced slow growth and, in particular, deflation, uh, deflationary economy, as Europe is now in the ver on the verge of experiencing. Japanese government tried many things and, in fact, achieved many things. It's not that Japan did not, uh, <coughs> it's not that Japan did nothing to the situation, but the result was not satisfactory and not enough to overcome this uh, deflationary economic um, <coughs> environment. And needless to say, financial crisis was of no help. But however, um, things are changing since the end of 2012, about a year and a half ago. So consumption picked up, exports went up, investment went up, prices went up, GDP went up. So finally, Japan is on the recovery path to overcome this deflation. And one cannot, uh, sorry, uh, in particular, we also saw a remarkable performance of stock prices, which a lot of US investors are excited about uh, in 2013, which increased more than 50% in a year. And one, one cannot um, attribute, <coughs> oops, sorry, before this. <laughs> Uh, in the days of integrated global economy, one cannot attribute one thing for uh, ec economic performance, but you can attribute this <coughs> for the economic recovery as a key contributing factor, and that is so-called the Abenomics. The Abenomics is an economic policy led by Prime Minister Abe, and it has three, ar it, we call it three arrows. Aggressive, first arrow, aggressive monetary policy, second arrow, flexible fiscal policy, and third arrow, growth strategy, structural reform. <coughs> and, we, and we saw a remar remarkable recovery of economy since Prime Minister took office. But having said this, we, the government of Japan recognized that the remarkable recovery of um, Japanese economy in 2013, this is a do a lot to monetary factor, monetary easing, uh, which led to a uh, weaker yen. <coughs> and we also acknowledge and know that monetary effect does not last forever. So the important thing for Japanese economy is to raise the 
uh, potential GDP, um, <coughs> GDP growth rate. The, we need to raise the productivity of the supply side of the Japanese economy. And that is what the third hour of growth, growth strategy is all about. <coughs> so last year, in, in June 2013, Prime Minister Abe announced his first uh, growth strategy. And it was in consider three pillars, unleashing potential of private sector, maximizing on human resource and establishing new frontiers. And <coughs> a year later, June this year, uh, we revised the growth strategy. These are the 10 priorities of the revised growth strategy, <coughs> uh, categorized in three groups. Boost Japan's earning power, strong corporate sector that creates profit. Second group is the increase and diversify labor force, addressing demographic challenge. And third, reform regulated sector into growth engines. I would like to highlight the order, in particular in the first group, corporate governance on the top of the list. Um, I'm not sure if, ma if many of you know, but before announcing this uh, growth strategy in June, the most intensely heated debate was about corporate tax reform, namely corporate tax cut reduction, <coughs> uh, which uh, business community was uh, very excited about. Uh, and we di and this it is a bit very difficult issue. So we had an intensive dis um <coughs> discussion, and most of the people, including people in the government, thought that corporate tax reform will come on the top of the list for this uh, revised growth strategy. But we had an internal discussion, debate, and <coughs> put corporate governance on the top of the list. And there is a reason. We want Japanese economy to grow. And in order for Japanese economy to grow, corporate sector needs to create value added and create profit. And for the, the corporate companies to make profits, companies need to make right management decisions. And right management decisions, good management decisions, will <coughs> are supported by a good and sound corporate governance structure of the company. <coughs> so for example, if uh, the government lowers the corporate tax rate and corp companies will make more profits, but it is up to the management how they will use that profit, how they allocate the capital that they have. They can uh, allocate the profits to uh, capital expenditure, or dividends, share buybacks, or reserves. It's up to the management decision. So basically, in a sense, everything boils down to corporate governance in the end. <coughs> So that is why we put the uh, corporate governance um, at the top of on the top of the list. I will uh, sh explain to you some of the items of the ten priorities uh, starting from the next slide. Reinforcing corporate governance. So this is the top on the list. <coughs> uh, since uh, 2013 growth strategy was announced, we have. Uh, done and achieve many things. And one thing uh, about corporate governance, one is the so-called JPX index 400. Sorry to be a, a bit technical in detail, but uh, there are more than 3,000 companies listed on uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange. Yes. But this index 400 will is uh, <coughs> composed of um, selected companies, 400 companies, whose criteria are such as high ROE uh, over the three over a three year period, or independent outside directives, or like disclosure uh, information, preferably like in, in English and so on. Basically this index focuses on uh, shareholder value. <coughs> so, and in Japan, wh where peer pressure is a very uh, key social factor in uh, making things change. It will not look good if you're 
for a management, management team if you are not in the 400 companies. So this will create an atmosphere <coughs> and motivation for companies to think, think about shareholders' value. The second thing that we did was to develop so-called stewardship code. This is a guideline for investors, which encourages to get engage in a dialogue with companies. And <coughs> so, um, so this will also create an atmosphere that investors and companies should talk with each other, not like they see them each other as like rivals or enemies, hostile, hostility, and so forth. More engagement and dialogue for the companies to grow, and also invest taking the taking into the account the investors' view and so on. So this also creates an atmosphere of <coughs> shareholders and companies talking, uh, thinking about uh, corporate governance. And the third item that we <coughs> uh, accomplished to achieve is the so-called outside directive. We revised the corporate law uh, this year and made it an obligation for companies to hire outside directors. <coughs> and if they don't, they have to explain why they did not hire outside directors. Um, <coughs> so again, uh, this makes the companies, Japanese companies, to think about how they can structure corporate governance uh, more effectively. And what are we doing now? Uh, we are now developing so-called corporate governance code. Uh, this <coughs> will uh, this will be the guidelines for the companies now uh, to comply, ex uh, accept, <coughs> and it will include items such as. Um, uh, rights of shareholders or treatment of equal treatment of shareholders, transparency, disclosure, and so on. Corporate governance is something that is integrated and related to business culture. So it is not easy to change over time, uh, over overnight. So and there's no like silver bullet. One one measure will change everything. So we are coming out with these new ideas, new initiatives uh, to create this atmosphere uh, so that the companies will take into consideration about corporate governance, which in turn will uh, lead to right management decision, which also then lead to uh, making profits, in other words, value added. So these, and we have been doing this, and I said the things cannot change overnight, but we are observing changes already. <coughs> this uh, chart shows the uh, percentage of companies which have um, outside directors. In 2013, we only had 62.3 percent, but in a period of a one year, in 2014, it, the figure has increased to 74.3 percent, so 12 percent increase in one year. And then <coughs> some of the companies <coughs> that hired um, Outside directors include like Canon, Nippon Steel, Torei, Nintendo, Kagome, the, the one, uh, very large companies in Japan. <coughs> so as you can see, the private sector is already responding to Abenomics. <coughs> um, this may be a little bit too technical, so I will just skip. Uh, corporate tax reform. Um, <coughs> I know that there's a debate also in the U.S. about corporate tax reform and it is very difficult and not being debated intensively uh, in the Capitol White House. Uh, what we have done, this April we have first reduced the rate from 38.01% to 35.64%, more than 2%. But what we are now debating is how to reform the corporate tax system in a more pro-growth manner. <coughs> and in the growth strategy, the Prime Minister strongly insisted to have a sentence about corporate tax reform, at least to give a guideline 
before we decide in December. And the language was aimed to reduce percentage level affected corporate tax rate down to the 20s in several years. The reduction will start from fiscal year 2015. So now it's kind, kind of vague, we, un, we know. So now we are discussing what does 20s mean? Is it, does it mean 25, uh, 29% the level of, the, uh, of Germany or 25% the average rate <coughs> for OECD countries? Several years. Does it mean three years, five years? And then if we combine these two, 29% uh, in three years, 25% in five years, or 25% uh, in three years, or so forth. So th that is uh, what we are discussing. And of course, we cannot ignore the <coughs> uh, alternative revenue sources problem issue. If we lower the corporate tax rate, um, where can we find alternative revenue. Uh, Japan is experiencing, a, a, again, serious uh, <coughs> uh, fiscal situation. Fiscal integrity is uh, one of the uh, big issues also. So it, it is a difficult issue, but we need the engine of Japanese economy, corporate sector, to create more value added. So, uh, anyway, the conclusion will be announced by the, will be um, decided and announced by the end of this year, in December. <coughs> uh, workforce. Um, this may have some intellectual uh, aspects, so I will um, talk about a woman's participation. Um, <coughs> uh, again, a lot of, may, may, uh, of you may know, but Japan is facing a demographic issue. Uh, fewer children and aging population. And in 50 years, our population is estimated to become two thirds of the size of today. So one out of three people will disappear. That's pretty scary. And it, is, it poses a serious um, <coughs> uh, problem to the future of the Japanese economy. So we need more workers to keep the economic activity and its growth. So we expect women to play a leading role on this uh, issue. And if I can just show you some um, chart. This slide shows the participation rate of women uh, <coughs> in the workforce by age cohort and by countries. Red line is Japan and <coughs> which sort of we can see like the M-shaped curve, meaning that the, the women in the 30s uh, are, many of them exit out of the workforce because they have to take care of children. Where, while the, uh, like Sweden, the blue line, this is kind of upside down U-curve, where those uh, cohorts of people do not, exit the workforce while they um, <coughs> raise their children, have families. So for example, to give you some figures, uh, participation rate for 35 to 39 cohort of, for Japan is 66.2%, while that of Sweden is 88.9%. And by the way, US is 74.1%, like in the middle, the green line. So <coughs> Japan facing a critical demographic issue, U.S. level is not, in fact, enough. We have to um, reach the Swedish level uh, to overcome this uh, decreasing workforce issue. So what are we doing now is, first, we are already embarking on increasing the childcare facilities uh, to accommodate more than uh, accommodate <coughs> 400,000 additional children by uh, 20 fiscal year 2017, and <coughs> on the growth revised growth strategy, uh, we have also uh, declared to increase the capacity of after school programs for additional 300,000 stu additional students in elementary schools um, in Japan. I'm not sure if you have been in Japan, but it is very difficult to have a nanny. 
um, <laughs> unless you're super rich. Uh, the, uh, the very few of them, uh, few of the ha households can afford uh, nannies. So we, we need to have this child care facilities, kindergarten, and even an elementary school, after school program so that like, the society can take care and look after the children while mother's parents are away uh, at work. So this is a cr very um, kind of primitive issue measures, but this is one of the most critical um, <coughs> issue for uh, for Japan, and in particular in terms of women's participation uh, in the labor force. Um, some of you may be interested in uh, foreign labor in Japan. Uh, Prime Minister Abe has said clearly that uh, immigration is not on the policy agenda for Japan. But I, it is not highlighted and it is not we intend to keep it in a low profile. But we have decided to receive more foreign workers, uh, construction workers, to build the facilities for the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. The Minister of Infrastructure has estimated that we will need 150,000 additional construction workers to build the facilities for the Tokyo Olympics. And their estimate also <coughs> says that <coughs> they can recruit construction, 80,000 additional construction workers uh, domestically. But they also kind of um, admit that they will need 70, more than 70,000 construction workers from abroad. So you will have many construction workers, and actually, in fact, shipbuilding sector as well, but in this five-year time period. And I, I always say that this is kind of a test case for Japan. And if we can deal with this receiving uh, foreign workers to Japan in a very short period of time, I think after 2020, we will be in a position where we can discuss in a more constructive, productive <coughs> way of the relationship with the foreign labor force. So in a sense, personally, I <coughs> uh, am looking forward to have a more um, productive discussion about, like, uh, about foreign labor after 2020. It's uh, in a bit long away, uh, far away in the state, but it will be coming in, uh, in about five, five or so years. <coughs> uh, Master Stage is done. This is too technical. Uh, one, this about electricity power sector reform. Um, we had Japan experience the Fukushima incident, and <coughs> uh, energy policy issue is one of the uh, most critical one in Japan. And so, after after the Fukushima accident, we have uh, been through a very intensive discussion on the future of the uh, electric energy sector, in particular electric <laughs> power sector reform. And we have designed three-stage um, reform in this sector. And the previous one has been in place for nearly 60 years. So we are overhauling this uh, system. Uh, which has been in place for 60 years. So this is a big reform, but maybe the biggest reform that we have uh, <coughs> been, we are embarking now. Uh, first stage would be the establishment of organization for the nationwide grid system. Sorry, the arrow is in a out of place. The second stage would be the full liberalization of retail market, and the third one will be the separation of generation <coughs> and transmission of uh, electricity. <coughs> In a word, it is, we, uh, Japan is, uh, will be, will, the system will become a system in uh, some of the states in the United States, more um, deregulated uh, system uh, for the public uh, electricity power. So, of course, the purpose is <coughs> to, for the households to uh, enjoy lower cost electricity with a more stable uh, supply. So <coughs> and 
we have passed the legislation for the second stage now, so we are now preparing the legislation for the third stage, um, preparing for the next um, diet session in uh, 2015. <coughs> um, Japan's FD, e EPA, FDA network. EPA stands for Economic Partnership Agreement. Basically, it's uh, equivalent to FDA's free trade agreements. And I think before I came to New York, this was my profession. I was the MEPI negotiator for FDA's in the Asia Pacific region. <coughs> so I can talk about it in length, but today I will make it very short. Uh, Japan is now embarking on four mega FDA's. I call them mega FDA's. It, the FDA's used to be a bilateral ones, like Japan with Malaysia, Indonesia, bilateral ones. But now the trend is now more kind of regional um, <coughs> FDA's. And t one of the most famous one is TPP, Trans Pacific Partnership, which U.S. is also a member of a negotiating party. Uh, but Japan, in addition to TPP, we are negotiating with the EU on FDAs. RCEP, this is, AS it used to be called ASEAN plus six, as which the members are ASEAN 10 countries, plus China, Japan, Korea, India, Australia, and New Zealand. And we are also <coughs> uh, negotiating more kind of uh, small group uh, FDA, China, Japan, Korea FDA. So we are trying to expand an, an environment, create an environment for, for the Japanese companies to operate more globally, regionally, uh, across the borders. <coughs> um, agriculture, maybe I can skip. Um, and what we are expecting in the coming month, the biggest issues that the government of Japan needs to make in the coming months are about taxes. <coughs> As I told you, the corporate tax cut, uh, this will be, the conclusion will become available in December. Another thing that I did not touch upon was the consumption tax hike. We have already raised consumption tax hike this April from 5 to 8 percent. And there are a lot of discussion about the impact, but we are scheduling to raise the consumption tax again in October 2015 from 8 percent to 10 percent. <coughs> and the Prime Minister will decide whether he will stick to the schedule of raising the tax in October 2015, again this December. So this will be the most important, of course many of, well, um, all of them are important, but these are the most important uh, issues that the government of Japan needs to <coughs> uh, decide. So that is something that uh, you should look out for if you're interested in Japan, how much commitment the Japanese government is uh, <coughs> posing on this uh, abenomics. Just to uh, show you uh, the editorial from the uh, New York Times uh, yesterday, actually. This editorial uh, basically uh, argues that the consumption tax hike in April was a bad idea. Uh, the negative impact of the tax hike uh, was quite, they argue that it was severe, that it is posing a threat to the <coughs> uh, Japanese economic recovery, and they proposed to postpone the uh, uh, next uh, consumption tax hike. Rather, they argue that <coughs> the government should do two things. One is to require Japanese corporation to include more outside directors, independent directors on their board. And the second recommendation is to get more women into the working force. So New York Times, I read them every day, so no criticism, but they are right in one way and wrong in another way. They are right, correct, to identify the issues that Japan is, Japanese economy is facing. These two are correct answers. 
but they are wrong in the sense that we, it's like we are doing nothing. As I explained to you, we are trying to address these issues and really making uh, some progress. <coughs> so um, that is the <coughs> the situation of the policy implementation. I just want to go over what is different this time. As a government official, working for many prime ministers recent years, every time new prime minister comes to office, he says, what's my new, uh, growth strategy? So I have been engaged in drafting many growth strategies myself. So when prime minister came in and he said, another growth strategy, a lot of us wonder and question growth strategy again and kind of reluctant to you know, do some work on growth strategy. But this time, we also feel different about economics and this growth strategy. And I listed some of the, <coughs> the reasons why I think this time is different. First one is um, it is combined with bold monetary policy and fiscal policy. Structural reform is really difficult to execute and achieve in a economically bad conditions. You need a you know, good economic condition to achieve reforms, make changes, so people can uh, accommodate and afford the change. So this time is different. So monetary policy is playing a huge role in this uh, third arrow. And which benefits the uh, third arrow. The second one is the government architecture for clear instructions to all ministers and dynamic follow-up process. Prime Minister Abe <coughs> established the so-called the Council of for Industrial Competitiveness. This is an overarching body above all ministers which delivers clear instruction of prime minister and growth strategy and reviews its implementation. And the second point is that he has assigned Minister Amari, who is next to Prime Minister Abe, um, <coughs> as, the f as a full-time minister for this growth strategy, not a part-time job for him. So Minister Amari, who is uh, very um <coughs> uh, skilled and regarded a uh, politician who ha was also a former minist minister of METI, so he knows a lot about economic policy. So he's a real appropriate person to take in charge. So he's the full-time minister to drive this uh, growth strategy. So this uh, structure, government structure and the leader uh, is making a huge change. And maybe <coughs> just to highlight the last but not least, political stability. Uh, this is, I think, essential. If we have too many prime ministers and too many ministers, uh, even the government officials will <coughs> kind of have to think about the next growth strategy for the next leaders. And if we, this is off the record, but if we know that this minister will not last so long, we will be very reluctant to you know, cut the deal or give the credit for the minister w when he cannot accomplish that uh, mission. So political stability is very important for making decisions, implementing uh, until the end. <coughs> so this is what is, um, what is driving the uh, uh, recovery of the Japanese economy. So uh, as a government official, along with my colleagues in Japan, uh, <coughs> we believe that this time may be the last kind of chance for Japan's reform. And we feel we share the same um, sense of urgency. So we are very committed, uh, the political level, the, the official government level, we are very much committed to Abenomic with this sense of urgency. So I hope <coughs> uh, we can continue to implement this uh, and execute this growth strategy 
So I would appreciate your kind support, observation, and what's happening in, uh, in Japan. Uh, this is about uh, Abenomics, but before I conclude, I just want to touch about Invest Japan. I'm also a salesman of Japanese business, and I always encourage ja uh, US businessmen to come to Japan and do their business, expand their business in Japan. And I always, I have this four, re and um, many Americans, U.S. businessmen think, why do I need to go to, go to Japan, uh, where China is growing much faster, and <coughs> uh, it's a developed country, it's not cheap. But I always give this four reasons uh, of, of for choosing Japan. One is that it is the third largest market integrated with Asian markets. <coughs> If you'd like to know, kind of get the sense of the size, I, I would like to t uh, draw attention to this slide. The, the Kanto region, which includes the Tokyo metropolitan area, this actually is bigger than the size of the United Kingdom. And Chugu region in the central area, this is an uh, area where to uh, Toyota's headquarters is in Nagoya. Uh, our IT. Uh, this is bigger than the size of Netherlands. Osaka area, where I4 is located, uh, have a uh, con conference. This is bigger than Korea, in fact. So you can see the size of the of Japan. The next complaints that U.S. business <coughs> ask is the well, Japan Japanese market is already crowded, competitive, and also closed for foreign companies. But that is not necessarily true. Like Apple, Samsung, if they have competitive products, they're in. And this also shows the uh, <coughs> companies of uh, sales in, in Japan. About 20 years ago, there were only three uh, foreign companies uh, in the top 20. But after nearly 20 years, now half of them are uh, foreign products. <coughs> So, in a sense, there is an untapped market for the foreign products in Japan if you have uh, competitive products. <coughs> and also, um, this going back, second reason is the high predictive business environment. Of course, there's a rule of law. It's in Japan, most of them are in Japanese, but there's rule of law, and in particular, IPR, <coughs> IPR protection, which other Asian countries are not so much good at. Of course, not all, but some. <coughs> uh, third one is the place to build a dream team of global talent for R&D. Suppose you're a, a venture company's manager, and you would like to build a team for, of uh, global talents from like Russia, China, India, uh, Poland, Japan, U.S. If you would like to set up that team in Silicon Valley, it is quite difficult uh, because of the visa issue. Even for me, <coughs> uh, who is from Japan, working for the government, uh, gov working for the government of Japan for 20 years, I had to go through a lot of paperwork, had to get in line for more than two hours in front of the M uh, U.S. Embassy in Tokyo. It needs a lot of work, and so I, I, it, should, it would be a nightmare for all those other you know, talents abroad trying to bring them in, uh, into the United States. I'm not, I'm not saying the United States is bad, of course, but just for example. In Japan, if, if the person has a bachelor degree and has a three-year experience, basically you're in. So it is a very easy place to build a <coughs> dream team of global talents for R&D. Uh, last but not least, ideal um, location for Asia he regional headquarters. <coughs> uh, it is a kind of, s in other places of Asia, uh, there are, of course Japan has its, may have its own issue, but a lot of Asian countries has their own country specific issues so it is difficult. Of course, you have to have physical presence of like sales office <coughs> and so on in other parts of the Asian region. But for the regional headquarter, whose mission is to
plan a regional strategy, implement them. You need to be away and not to be distracted from country-specific issues. In that sense, uh, Japan is quite an uh, ideal place not to be distracted and detached and detached from our country specific issues. So if you are thinking of doing business in Asia or know someone in Asia, uh, please let me know. Japan, the uh, Jetro will be of help. Um, sorry. Uh, we do a lot of uh, good support for uh, foreign companies to come to Japan. <coughs> so thank you very much for your attention. And thank you very much for, uh, for listening. Thank you very much.